Hello everyone and welcome to the History Unicorn, Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of Bigfoot, Dogman, and other cryptids from the subreddit r slash supernatural encounters, r slash Bigfoot, and r slash cryptids. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what's lurking in the dark. Hello, I've been debating about posting this for a while, but my friend said I should. I wanna state that this incident is 100% true but may be explainable. This happened two years ago, during late August 2020. Me and a good friend of mine, we will call him Sam, were going to do a two-day, one-night camping trip deep in the Sierra Nevada mountains of Northern California. 40 miles north of Yosemite. We were scouting deer ahead of the season. We parked on the side of a two-way highway which was around 7,000 feet in elevation and started walking straight up the mountain. We had come upon a clear flat meadow, and decided it was a good place to camp. Once we set up camp, we climbed up to about 9,000 feet, and came upon another meadow. We will call this the upper meadow. This had the most beautiful views I have ever seen of the Sierra Nevadas. At this point, I was tired and Sam wanted to explore the rest of the upper meadow. I wanna say it was about 350 to 400 yards long. The grass was about waist high. We had brought a small little camping chair that fits in one of our packs. Sam wanted to explore and I wanted to sit and see the view and eat a snack. So we decided to split up. It was about 15 minutes later when I got this weird feeling. It wasn't necessarily a scared feeling, but more than putting me on edge, it felt like something was watching us. So I decided to get up to try to find Sam and reconnect. It took me six whole minutes to find him, which didn't make any sense. It was a fairly long meadow, but six minutes just felt too long. Something was just off about this meadow. While writing this Sam and I both just got goosebumps looking back at that moment. For some reason, we can't remember how, but eventually we met back up and went to the top of the mountain. At this point, we decided to go to the top of the mountain and looked around, and then decided to go back down. Once we had gotten back to camp we decided to eat dinner and got to sleep around 9.30 pm. This is where it gets interesting. Once we had gone to bed nothing seemed out of the ordinary. Animal sounds here and there, but after around 45 minutes we had both fallen asleep. It wasn't until, I'm thinking 12.30 am, I woke up to the sound of what I thought was a branch getting smacked against a tree. This went on for a while and it was coming from all around. As I was laying in my sleeping bag listening to this it suddenly stopped. Now one thing I forgot is where we set up camp. It was next the edge of a straight climb up a mountain. The reason I say this is that I heard felt a sound kind of like running but the thud of its footsteps sounded heavy like really heavy. The only thing I could think of during that time was WTF is going on out there. And I just couldn't move. I could hear this thing running until it suddenly stopped, and then I heard it again. When I heard it run it almost sounded like it was on two legs. This happened four to five times then it all stopped for good. The next morning. I woke up to see if I could find anything about what happened during the night, but found nothing. Sam didn't hear anything, so he didn't believe me at the time. But now looking back, he feels differently. I don't know what to make of this whole situation. Writing this made my blood run cold. Ever since then I've had so many questions and no answers. I'd love feedback from all of you. Here's a comment from this post. Weak, draw of A, commented. Honestly don't know, but it could be a fawn, or satyr. The meadow was probably a hallowed ground of sorts. If it's something you felt off about. Normally anything that feels supernatural, gives off a goosebump feel. That something feels wrong about the situation, which is human danger sense, of sorts. Some people feel it, and some don't. I'm not an expert though, so you can take this with a grain of salt. The so-called eyes was just likely observing you, because you most likely trespassed into hallowed ground. It's possible if you attempt to get back to that area, that you won't be able to see it there. In the comments below, let me know what you think happened to OP. Was it just a normal lazy day, in the woods or was it paranormal? I am hoping to hear from some of you, 
your thoughts on my own personal experiences. I was a forester for years, in a program you've probably never heard of called FIA. A program set up by the USFS and carried out by each state. In this case, I work for the VDOF. Our work consisted of usually two-man teams going out to a predetermined plot point. Usually picked by computer, in some cases plots were still active, from the 50s. On two of these plots, my co-worker and I experienced speech in a language neither of us knew or could ever discover, in our own internet searches. The closest I could ever find were the Sierra sounds. Which some parts still raise the hair on my neck. What we heard was much more. Casual, is the word that comes to mind. No growling or grunts, but syllables to a very strange language. Both times began as who is that talking, and why are they way out here? Our plot usually landed miles from a road in national forests, then they would slowly get closer. The first time was by far the creepiest. Hearing someone that seemed to be talking to themselves, for a good 20 minutes slowly getting closer. But still a good ways out. Then as we were leaving, I stopped to take a call from a tree, and then we really got talked to. A booming voice, I mean loud. Like feel it in your chest loud started talking to us from what couldn't have been more than 30 yards away, on the other side of thick rhododendron. Best description I can give as to what it sounded like is a deaf person speaking or Japanese. It was all rolled together or slurred. It spoke to us twice like that, I asked my partner if he had his pepper spray. He unsnapped it and the creature walked away, with some very heavy feet. Always in the thickest part of trees, where nothing could be seen. The next time, months later and a few counties away. We were again in National Forest. The same one in fact. After a few hours working, we began to hear. Talking? Pretty far away, but distinctly two voices. They were talking back and forth to each other, and very slowly getting closer. This time we didn't take our time, but hurried through what we had left, and hiked our asses out of there. Also, while we worked on these plots, we are constantly yelling measurements back and forth. As well as sounding trees to check for hollow or rot. There are several other strange happenings while we were out and about. But these two stick out to me. Please share your thoughts and insights. I would love to know I'm not crazy, and there isn't a bunch of deaf Japanese people scaring the bejesus out of hillbillies like me. Here are some of the comments from this post. Thumperfootpig commented. Yeah, well, these stories are excellent, so now you better spill the beans on those other strange happenings. OP responded to Thumperfoot Big. There are a few. Nothing I can ever say for sure is paranormal, or anything of the like. One oddity I saw, a few different times, were trees around about 10 to 15 inches in diameter, that were stuck into the ground with the root balls sticking into the air. About 6 feet up. I saw that on our hike into a plot once, with there being three of these along our way. This could be done with logging equipment, but this was on National Forest. And quite a ways from a road. I saw this again a few years later in West Virginia, along a gas line right of way. Had a massive tree, 20 plus inches in diameter, fall directly on a center plot, with no wind to speak of, and no rot or anything to be obvious reason for this tree to fall. Then several times where it was just too quiet, and a feeling of being watched. Movement out of the corner of your eye. Things I can't chalk up to being anything at all. Thumperfoot Big responded to OP. That inverted tree thing is most commonly reported from up in Alaska. I'm not sure I've heard a good explanation on what it means though. Thanks for sharing your stories. LePay also commented. Great story. You're very lucky to have heard Sasquatch language. It is called. Samurai Chatter. And I think you of all people probably know exactly why. Thanks so much for sharing. OP responded to LePay. I had come across that term, but I had never been able to find anything quite like it. It was all very non-aggressive. Even when the one was right on top of us. I felt more like I was being scolded for making so much noise. There were never any wood knocks or growling or throwing. More like we were being watched, and they were just talking about how strange we are. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's experience. Do you think they encountered a Bigfoot or was it a known animal experience?
Okay, so for my boyfriend's birthday, in a couple days we decided to go camping in a state park. With a cave that we checked out earlier that day. We go to the tour and everything is great, feels magical. We leave and check out some other stuff in town and it's completely perfect. Literally the town was perfect and me and my boyfriend were joking that it's a Texas Chainsaw Massacre town. We just felt like no way was this town this perfect. So after checking out town and grabbing a few other essentials, we go to set up camp, this is backcountry camping, our site is about 0.75 miles into the woods with trails throughout. Everything is normal, other than slight eerie feelings, like we were being watched, we assumed it was just being in a new campground, by ourselves. Around the time the trails close, and everybody except the campers have to leave. We hear a scream. It sounded like the way a child screams, but in a deep voice. But it sounded deep and guttural and not like anything either of us have heard. And we both go camping often and have a pretty well knowledge on all animal sounds in our area. As well as googling more animal sounds after leaving safely, my boyfriend and I were both confused by the sounds and he joking hollers back then cues a few bird noises, and an owl fly over our heads. Then a crow flies over, coming from the direction the owl flew to. After another hour or so, it's getting dark fast, and me and my boyfriend are building up the fire. Trying to get it to stay longer than five minutes uninterrupted. Then, once it is completely dark, we start hearing branches break, coming closer to us. And we're beating on pots and pans trying to scare it off. And we already have a fire giving off some light, but only in the areas that are cleared out. We could have only see about 10 feet in any direction, but the branches keep slowly getting broken closer and closer to us. But progressing very slowly. Over the course of 15 to 20 minutes only got about 5 feet closer, it should be noted that not once did it move away, and we kept throwing lighter fluid onto the fire. To scare it away and the fire is roaring, but it's only budging closer. Me and my boyfriend have a machete and a knife, respectively. And we grab the wallet and car keys out of the tent and book it the three quarters mile back to the car. Once we left our site, and got onto the trail, we didn't hear any more of the loud noise, we still heard more little animals scurrying. But nothing compared to what was happening at the site. So any help on identifying WTF was out there would be greatly appreciated. TLDR. Me and my boyfriend got insanely freaked about something in the woods, we don't know what it is. Here are a few of the comments from this post. Justin to the wilds commented. I've heard foxes and mountain lions make really unusual sounds, in the wild that I've never heard through any internet search or YouTube videos. OP responded to Justin to the wilds. It was a lot deeper than either of those. Justin to the wilds responded to OP. Well, the one time I heard a Sasquatch, it was a piercing human-like scream. With these booming undertones that I don't think I had the capability to completely hear. It rattled my bones, induced a primal fear and the second time it screamed I cowered in fear until daybreak. Let me know in the comments, what do you think OP and their boyfriend heard in the woods? Let me preface this with saying, that I absolutely am an animal person. And I love dogs, I have three, so me having this kind of reaction to a canine really surprised me. I would also like to say that we just recently saw a black coyote, which is rare and was very cool to see, despite the negative lore around seeing one, so I know that's not what this was. As a side note, my husband and I also saw a black bear recently, while driving home at night. It was just walking along the road. And it was completely unafraid, which was bizarre behavior. And concerning on a few levels, so I thought I'd just add that in. Though I didn't get so much of a weird feeling from the bear. We also saw a doe moving strangely after we saw the bear. And it was very close to our house. Okay, so on to the incident that happened just this morning. My husband and I, again, were driving home. But this time after dropping our son off at school. So we're at about the same place we'd seen the bear actually. And we see something in the road a bit ahead of us. So we couldn't make it out at first. As we drew closer, it was apparent that this thing was a dog. Or at least we thought at first. I assumed it was a border collie, as it was mostly black, maybe some white on the paws. Though don't quote me on that, with a white blaze on the chest. We live in a very rural area, so people let their dogs roam all the time. I don't agree with this, because, as I said, 
We saw a bear just walking around, but dogs around here regularly travel over pretty vast territories. So I didn't think much of it, at first. Then I looked at the face, and it just felt so wrong. First, this thing was moving weird, and granted, that could have been because it was hurt. Though it looked fine from what I saw. It also had something white around its neck. Which I believe was a collar. Though it could have been rope or something. I was a little distracted by its presence, so I only registered that there was indeed something around its neck. As its eyes locked with mine. Which they did for a good few seconds, before we drove past enough that I couldn't see it anymore. I saw how completely yellow they were. I don't remember even seeing pupils, just yellow, almost glowing yellow. The ears were also standing up straight, so not a border collie. The hairs on the back on neck stood up as we passed each other. I can't really describe just how wrong it felt. I asked my husband, what the hell is that? And he just said, I don't know. I saw in the rearview mirror that it stopped in the road for a minute and was just staring before it turned into the tall grass on the side of the road and disappeared. I said that it was unsettling, and my husband, who isn't easily rattled, said that it was too. Now, I usually am the person, while watching a horror movie, that will yell at the people for doing blatantly stupid things. And I say this because, despite me being unsettled like I was, I had the strongest impulse to go back and look for it. Which, obviously, I didn't do. But just the fact that it was there at all and lasted as long as it did baffles me. And I can't get the thing out of my head. I do remember dreaming of yellow eyes, too, but that was months ago. And I'd completely forgotten about it till now. And no, this is far from my first strange experience. Edit. Any suggestions or theories are welcome. I brought it up to my husband again, when we were going to get the kiddo. And I said, did you see that thing's eyes? To which he nodded that he had. He said, still thinking about it, ha. Huh. And I answered yes, as I obviously had been. He said he'd been trying to place it that whole time, and he just couldn't. Let me know what you think in the comments, what do you think OP saw? Was it a normal dog or was it something else? I don't know if I will ever show anyone this. Or tell anyone about it. I am thinking about posting this on Reddit and getting people's opinion. I am currently in an area in South Carolina. I'm not going to tell where I am, because I don't want anyone going here looking. I am at a father and son camping trip with my church. We are in a small state park and it just got dark around an hour ago. When my sun was setting, and it was starting to get dark, I decided to go for a jog on the trails in the park. The park is small, only about 40 acres and has a small river running beside it. I went out for my jog and went a good distance from the camping area, and came to the end of the trail at the river. Going off to the right of the trail, was a very obvious game trail, and I decided to jog down it. Thinking I can't get lost because of how obvious the game trail is, and if I come to a place that it isn't easily visible, I would turn around. I went along and got off the trail. And went about 50 feet further in a swamp-like area. It was some dry area, but mostly mud and water. I had a very bright flashlight with me, and I was shining it around. And saw one of those classic cartoon looking beehives. I saw it and wanted to get closer, cause I wanted to throw a rock at it. And see if I could knock it down. It was about 20 yards ahead of me, and I started walking through it trying not to step in mud and ruin my sneakers. I got close to it, and behind it about 15 yards were two trees side by side, growing in almost a V-shape. I didn't think anything of it, and kept looking for something to throw at the beehive. And that's when a pair of eyes reflecting in the light, caught my eye. And I looked right between the trees growing in a V. At first I thought it was a very large black, dirty homeless man with long shaggy hair and beard, staring back at me. After about a second, I realized that this man had a very odd face. His nose was mostly flat, but very large and round at the bottom. At the opening of the nostrils, similar to a gorilla. He also had very large fat lips, and appeared to not have a neck. As soon as I saw and realized that this isn't a person, it stood up. I thought this was a man standing up, but it was something else squatting down. It stood up and looked like it was at least 10 to 12 feet tall. And had to be at least 700 or 800 pounds. 
It had very wide broad shoulders and was covered in hair. It had no neck. As soon as it stood up, I froze in my place. Too scared to even breathe. It started to go around the tree towards me, and as soon as it moved, something in my body took over and I ran like I never had before. I heard it splashing in the water, running as well. And I ran all the way back to the campsite, in less than a minute. And it took a few minutes for me to jog to where I was. I got back and I didn't want to scare anyone, so I went and told me dad what happened. I am not a real big dude, but I'm bigger than most people. I don't get scared easily at all. But this is the scar seat I have ever been in my life, and my dad could tell something was wrong. Just by looking at me. I told him about it and insisted we have to tell our church leader about this. Because there are kids playing in the woods. He said we will soon, and to go stay in the tent. He claims nothing is going to come into this campsite, but this thing is so big that if it wanted to. There is not a damn thing anyone could do about it. Shooting it would do nothing but piss it off. I am in the tent crying right now, and shakily typing this, so I'm sorry if something doesn't make sense. Before anyone says anything, no. I do not do drugs and I didn't imagine something. There was something there that is as real as I am. I have no idea how something like this isn't more known, but I will probably never tell anyone, including my mom or girlfriend. No one will ever believe me anyway. They will just say I'm lying or I imagined something. I might post this on Reddit cause, hopefully someone will believe me and can relate, but I need help. There is no way that I will sleep tonight, and I will never go anywhere in this area, for the rest of my life. And it will be a long time, if ever, that I go camping again. Here are some of the comments from this post. Realistic Law 1226 commented. Just don't go wandering at night. And if you have to carry a weapon, there's effed up shit in the woods everywhere in the world. OP responded to Realistic Law 1226. I didn't think anything of it. I usually always have a pistol, in case or a snake or animal or something. I love jogging through the woods and the one time I wasn't armed, this happened. But even if I did have my pistol, that wouldn't have made any difference. I will never make that mistake again. Realistic Law 1226 responded to OP. That's usually how it works, unfortunately. Always the one time, if you ever find yourself in a position, focus on doing damage to the eyes, if you have to fight. OP responded to Realistic Law 1226. I've always heard that and used that in fights with people, and dogs, and stuff. The eyes and nose, even though they seem to not be that bad. Can mess something up really bad. Eyes can mess it up and scare it. And nose can just mess you up and take you a minute to get back to yourself. First piece of advice. Leave those poor bees alone. They've done nothing to deserve your ire. Second, stay out of the woods, unless you're traveling with partners, a group composed of at least three people. More if you can help it. The parents will hopefully keep the children in check, away from the deep brush themselves. But if you haven't by the time I type this, you should inform the leaders about the presence of a large possibly threatening animal. So they can inform the rest of the campers, mainly the parents, to take even better caution with the kids. If whatever it is seems to be curious of your camp, I hope you all have weapons with you, but enduring any attention in safety is the highest priority. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think about OP's encounter? Do you think it's wise that OP wanted to throw a rock at bees? Do you think OP saw a Bigfoot or a bear? Are you enjoying the encounters so far? If yes, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our cryptid or any of our other series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments, what you think about the encounters we've discussed so far. So I grew up in a small town in the Blue Mountains of NSW Australia. And one day I heard something that still gets me thinking. One day me and my friend were walking down a small road, not necessarily near the bush. When all of a sudden we heard what can only be described as an ear-splitting roar from down by the bush. The roar ended with a horrible screech. 
I asked around, but most people I've talked to just say it was my imagination. But what I heard that day was definitely not my imagination. Growing up in the Blue Mountains, you hear stories such as the Black Panther, the Bunyip, and the Yaoi. Which has an origin in the mountains, to this day, I still remember that horrible screech, and I need someone's opinion on this. So if anyone can help I'd truly appreciate it. Here are some of the comments from this post. Justin to the Wilds commented. I know the Yowie is supposed to be similar to the American Sasquatch. My only experience with a Sasquatch was at 8 to 10 years old, after it hit my aunt's house. Sounded like a car wreck. I got up to look out the window and saw a the back of a white gorilla running on all fours to the side of the house. The roar I heard following turned into the highest pitch scream. My uncle went out with a shotgun. He came back saying that there were huge bloody claw marks on the house. We all stayed on the back porch, looking out on the lawn as my uncle paced around the property. The moon cast a shadow of the house on the lawn. Then I saw it in the shadow of the roof, a huge human-like shadow stood up on top of the house. The next scream was deafening. We yelled to my uncle as he quickly scurried inside. I didn't remember this at all until I had a nightmare recently and the next day asked my aunt. She had completely forgot me and my brother were there that night, and my mother remembers that I wouldn't sleep for weeks after. They threw my gorilla stuffy out to help. Chung Boy Jr. also commented. Definitely Yaoi, look up Bigfoot whoops and screams. Usually starts with a guttural roar sound and ends up in a very high pitch screech that's supposed to be pretty terrifying. They only roar when you're way too close, and they don't want you there. Otherwise, they usually chuck rocks or whoop and would knock. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's encounter. What do you think OP heard? This incident happened in 1963 in Euclid, BC. I was 22 and on my honeymoon, when I saw a creature. What I would later call a Bigfoot. I saw it in the clear light of day, free of any obstruction, and I have thought about it every day since. My husband and I were camping in the Broken Islands. It was early June, and the weather was beautiful. It was about 7 in the evening, and I walked to the edge of the water and began to wade out. The water came up to just below my shorts. I stood there and admired the beauty. The sun had not started to set, and there was a peaceful stillness at that moment. My husband was asleep in the tent, and I thought to wake him so we could cook dinner together. I turned back toward the beach, and it was standing there motionless. I didn't hear it make a sound. The beachhead was gravel and rocks that crunched and clicked as we moved around, but I didn't hear this thing at all. I couldn't understand what I was looking at, and just stood frozen. My eyes were going all over its body, trying to comprehend. I thought it was a naked man. It was taller than me by a wide margin. I was 5 foot 8, and this was probably over a foot taller. It was lean and lanky, like a basketball player. It hunched at the shoulders, had long arms that hung at its sides, in a non-threatening manner. It had long fingers, with black nails. It stood with its legs close together. It had long feet, just like its hands and fingers. It had a pot belly, and a thin penis hung down. It had a round head, and the face looked like a person, but different. Something off. The body was covered in a brownish hair layer, but its body's outline was still visible, the hair stuck up like an orangutan. The skin on the hands, feet, and face was visible and grayish. Dusty and ashy looking. Its eyes were black, and I couldn't see any other color. We just stood there looking at each other. I was stunned, and he was indifferent. He never looked away, but he had an expression of indifference. I said. Hello. In a broken half-whisper. I couldn't think of what else to do. He smiled at me, his lips peeled back, revealing large teeth, like horse's teeth. They looked too big and square for the mouth. When I looked at it in the face, the eyes, at that moment. I realized this was not a person. It was like a person, but it was something different. A wave of nausea overtook me. I began to vomit and felt faint. The world, started to spin. I moved towards the shore and fell on my hands and knees. I heaved with such force into the dirt that I also defecated myself. The spinning stopped, and I sat up. He was gone. 
I was there on my knees and just kept replaying the incident in my head for I don't know how long. I stripped my clothes off, and cleaned myself in the water. The sun was beginning to set, and I got dressed and lay next to my husband. I don't remember sleeping. Just fever, chills, dizziness. We left the next day. I never told my husband what I saw. We split up five years later. I live in Texas. I've remarried, had children, grandchildren, divorced again, and remarried. I never told a soul about what I saw. I would go to the library and look for books about monsters. Trying to understand what it was, the thing I saw. Bigfoot became popular in the late 60s and 70s. I saw the infamous PGF footage. That's not like what I saw, what I stood staring at. What changed me forever? I came from a typical Texas, all-American family. I wasn't supposed to see this. Now I'm someone with a secret. Something I could never talk about in my real life. My interest in this subject has been a complete secret. No one who knows me would ever guess. I have never said this out loud. I saw a Bigfoot in 1963. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's encounter. What do you think she saw? I was about 18, at the time. Seems weird saying this happened 20 years ago. I still remember this day. I was camping at the time, with my boyfriend. We were in Nordeg, Alberta, Canada. As we were driving back from our camping trip, we decided to stop on the side of the road. There was a little area where you could pull over, in your vehicle. For whatever reason, we got out of the vehicle and proceeded to walk into the bush, through a trail. It was a really beautiful day. We were avid hikers and walking into the bush was second nature. I would say probably about 30 feet in, I saw a staircase. It was attached to an old house. Knowing now, from what I've read, you are not supposed to climb any staircases, if seen in the forest. I climbed it and could see all around, in the bush. While I was on the staircase, stones were being thrown at me. I looked around and told my boyfriend, who was down below, to stop throwing rocks at me. He said he wasn't throwing anything at me. As I came down the steps I started to have an overwhelming feeling of fear. I then smelt a strong foul odor. One additional rock came flying at me, and hit me in the back. I knew that it wasn't my boyfriend. I can't really explain what happened next. But I saw a distorted area, it seemed fuzzy. Almost like moving water in a small section near some trees. I instinctively knew that we needed to get out of there. I didn't see any creature, but I just knew something was there and that we needed to run. We both quickly began running through the forest, back to the car. Once we arrived at the car, we quickly got in. My boyfriend told me that he didn't want to scare me, but that he had saw a man-like figure before we started to run. He didn't think it was human. We both, at the time, chalked it up to being supernatural. But recently I saw him on Facebook and reached out. Both of us married now, talked about that experience. He told me he was sure it was a Sasquatch. The man he saw had black brown hair, but looked distorted. He never forgot what happened. I just remembered how horrid the stench was. Let me know in the comments below, what you think about OP's experience. What do you think OP saw and better yet, smelled? I posted this as a reply to another thread, but I felt it deserves its very own thread. So everyone can read it. Sorry it's late here and I don't feel like editing. I realize somewhere in here is a there that should be a there, but f off I'm tired. Hope you enjoy? Okay, I'm 43 now. And this took place near Deadwood, South Dakota. In the Black Hills. When I was in the fifth grade. I'm pretty sure it was during the summer months between my fifth and sixth grade years, in school. So quick math says I was 10, maybe 11. My birthday is in July. Years old. Anywho, that matters because at that age, I was old enough to be aware of my surroundings and to know the difference between imaginary friends and real life ones. So basically none of this was imagined, on my part. And everything I'm going to say, is the best of my ability memory. True and in no way exaggerated or over-sensationalized for effect.
We lived in the small town of Leeds, South Dakota. Pronounced Lead. Which is about two miles further up the hill from Deadwood, South Dakota. The same Deadwood that Wild Bill Hickok was killed in. And the same Deadwood that they made a TV series after, of the same name. That area, geographically speaking, is strikingly different from the rest of its surroundings that consist of Wyoming. Flat and empty. To the left and the plains and badlands. Flat and empty. To the right. The Black Hills are actually really really pretty. And for an area that you could easily cover on a map, with your thumb. They are surprisingly dense and rugged. I can't imagine living their way back in the olden days. Gonna swerve to the right for a second. One winter, this bit is not at all relevant to Sasquatch, just a cool memory from living there, I remember it snowed over 8 feet of snow in only 2 days. 8 feet, that's as tall as the door frame in your house. 12 to 13 foot snow drifts. The first day of the blizzard, there was zero wind. Somewhere my mom has a photo of at least two feet of snow that had stacked itself up on top of the antenna of our old Chevy station wagon. It was nuts. Then the wind came with purple lightning. It was truly an insane place to live. Okay back on track. My family was considered big, by today's standards. I am number three of six boys. And having been raised a Jehovah's Witness, we were encouraged to keep our friends and associates to members of the church as much as possible. So one evening our family was having dinner with the Spears family at their house. On a piece of property near Deadwood, somewhere within maybe 10 miles from the town itself. Unfortunately, I cannot recall the exact location of their property, but I do recall nearby. There were some old rusty, no longer used, train tracks. That went through a short tunnel, that I remember was a blast of Roman candle, fireworks, fights in. This all takes place in the span of about 5 minutes total. Maybe less. But that evening it was about dusk and we had already eaten dinner. And the adults were in the house getting dessert ready, or doing whatever and it was myself, my older brother Jason, and two of their kids. Both boys and we were all within a few years in age. We were out messing around a couple few hundred yards away, in a barn that their family was setting up on their property. That was still under construction, but mostly finished. It had exterior windows, unsure if the actual windows had been installed or not. But it had a big barn door and everything. I recall we were climbing around, up in the rafters of the structure, and someone on the ground level commented about some horrible smell. And within a few moments, this smell caught up with me. Who was still making my way down from the rafters of this barn? I cannot describe this smell, so I will attempt to describe what this smell felt like. Things that smell really bad, I mean really bad. Cause the human body to involuntarily gag or throw up. This isn't something you even have time to try to stop. It's like a reflex made of everything horrible in nature. The smell hits you and is interpreted by your brain and before you can exhale, your body is trying to turn itself inside out. And that's what mine did. I clearly remember, I was getting ready to hop down onto a ladder, and I smelled it and instantly vomited fresh eaten spaghetti all down the front of my shirt and shorts. It easily could have been the pie eating contest seen from the movie Stand By Me. Right about then we heard a something outside that I had never heard before, and haven't heard since. But it was a big sound. You know the sound the elephant or the howler monkey, or the lion makes at the zoo. This was no different. It shook the earth. You could hear it, but you could also feel it inside your body. It was something. It was something alive. And it was big. Right about then I was motionless, as we all were. Staring at each other wide-eyed and while I was standing up in the rafters the entire. Effing. Structure. Creaked and groaned as the exterior wall was pushed on from my left to right. It was violent enough that I had to quickly kneel down and grasp the wood beam I was standing on, to keep from falling down to the ground. I probably move 6 to 8 inches laterally, sideways. That's a lot of movement for a single story structure, attached to a foundation to move. The dog was going apeshit. Its fur was standing straight up on its back, and it was in a defensive posture. Holding its ground, looking directly at the place on the broad side of this barn, that the sound came from. And the movement originated from, with the big barred door behind it. I hopped down onto the ground and had one of those moment of clarity thoughts. 
Is this about to come through the effing wall? As my brother and the two boys we were with started scrambling to find something. Anything to defend ourselves with. I think I ended up holding a rusty pair of garden shears or something. I recall the dog, a nice sized German shepherd. Turned towards the door and ran out. And rounded the corner with a very offensive, attack, posture. And it was obvious it was going out to protect its humans or die trying. I'm in my mid-forties and I have never witnessed that kind of split-second bravery, even in a human. One of the boys ran after the dog, clearly concerned that the dog was now in danger. And we all ran out of this barn with our makeshift torches and pitchforks. Minus the torches, in an attempt to do something, anything to investigate the dog having put itself in harm's way. Right behind the barn there was bushes and this hill started up pretty steep. Like a 45 degree angle. It was steep enough to climb up, but steep enough that it would have been a pain in the ass. And it was all overgrown with bushes, trees, and shit. We rounded the corner of the barn. And all I see is a very tall, dark figure that resembled a 10 foot tall football player. If its uniform and helmet was a dark, colored ghillie suit. It turned and ran full speed on two legs. I clearly recall it was grasping and swatting while breaking through the trees and bushes in its way, up this steep as F hillside. It was like a cartoon. Dark figure runs up the hill as bushes and trees rustle and break. Then it zigs and runs up further as trees and bushes rustle. Then zags and runs further as trees crash and break, and bushes rustle violently, whoosh whoosh crash. Slam. Whoosh. Snap. Boom. Crunch. Bang. Crash. And was up and over this incline in only a few, maybe 10 seconds. This was a god damn mountain. And it ran up it faster than I've ever seen anything run. Ever. It sprinted up a effing incline steeper than the laws of physics would allow you to drive a vehicle, and completely overgrown. With thick bushes and trees. The entire encounter, this thing was screaming. Louder than I could if I were to curl up my lips and bellow as loud as I can, right now. Hell, it was louder than three or four adults could yell, if all yelling at the same time. And yelling as if they were trying to permanently F up their voices. But it wasn't human, but it was screaming. The dog ran back to us after having given up chase. A quarter the way up the hill. And there we are, all four of us kids with the dog. None of us dead. And with the fires of hell lit under our feet, we flew back to the house. And exploded on the front door, all of us babbling, panting and crying. And puke covered and freaked the F out. But it was mostly dark by this point, and the adults dismissed us. And our story saying we must have seen a elk or a deer, or a bear. No. I've seen all of those in the wild, lots of times and when was the last time a bear screamed at you? and ran on two feet up an impossible incline grasping. To grasp anything, a thumb-like appendage is mandatory. Bears cannot grasp anything. Ever. And they never scream. This story is true. And totally unexaggerated or over-sensationalized for effect. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's encounter. What do you think he saw? A Bigfoot or a bear? There was some interest in this story, due to me mentioning it in a previous post. I talked to my dad, and he's cool with me sharing it, so here we go. This happened in the late 70s, as far as my father can remember. Around 78 or 79, when he was a teen out hunting in the woods, with his friend. This was a ways outside of Meridian, Texas, on a fall evening. My father and his friend spent a lot of time messing around, in the woods doing typical teen stuff. Firing off bottle rockets, hunting raccoons, underage drinking sometimes. But this day they were going hunting for squirrels. So when they set out my dad grabbed his 22 rifle. It was just a basic Ruger, or something, with a cheap scope on it. His friend had a really badass Vimarana that wasn't scared of anything. He would run up to bulls and chase them. He would get in scraps with bobcats, and he would chase off raccoons. He was walking along with them in the woods that day. He said that there was an old creek bed they would always go mess around in, so that's where they started. The walls of the creek bed were about five to six feet high. So they hopped down into it and casually walked along. Half-heartedly looking at the trees and such. 
All of a sudden my dad said the Vimarana started whimpering and wouldn't come any further. It hung back about 10 feet from them, refusing to continue no matter what they said. A few seconds later he said that it tucked its tail and ran off, back into the direction of the house. This made them confused, but they just shrugged it off. They took a couple steps further, and he said that up head. About 60 yards the creek bed took a hard right turn and elevated up on the banks were some trees. Now the sun was setting behind the trees, and beyond those couple trees was an open field. So you could see the sun setting relatively clearly. His friend stopped him and said, hey do you see that? And pointed in the direction of one of the trees. My dad said that he could see the outline of something big and seemingly hairy behind the tree. Peeking out at them. They weren't sure what it was so they called out. Hey we're just hunting, are we cool? No response or movements. My dad thought maybe it was some sort of huge porcupine, not uncommon in the area. He held up his rifle and looked through the scope to try and figure out what it was. Since the sun was setting behind whatever it was. It was hard for him to see any detail, due to the sunlight. But my dad told me what he could see freaked him out. He said that all he could make out was a large black, fur-covered head and shoulder peeking out. As he was looking at it, what he described as a large monkey-like hand grabbed the tree trunk. My dad froze and his friend asked him what he saw. My dad just shook his head and handed his buddy the rifle. His friend saw it too, and was freaked equally freaked out. They sat there for a minute just staring at it. Both them and whatever the creature was, not moving. My dad has always said that he didn't know what came over him. Maybe just teenage hubris, but he suggested they go check it out. Both he and his friend clambered up the left side of the embankment. And when they got to the top the creature had ducked back behind the tree. They slowly approached, and circled around the tree. My dad keeping the rifle handy. He always said that he didn't know why, because that small of caliber wouldn't have done much of anything against something that big. They both circled around the tree and it turned out that there was nothing there. It was just gone. They didn't know where something that big could have run off to, in that short amount of time. Without them seeing it, but nevertheless they checked the area just to see if they could find any sign of what it was. Turns out they found two depressions where it would have been standing. But due to the fall leaf litter, there wasn't any definition to the tracks. He did say that whatever it was, was big and heavy. The tracks were about 12 to 14 inches in length, then he went on to say that they estimated the creature to be about 8 feet tall, at the most. Other than the tracks, there was nothing else to be found. No smell, no fur, no additional tracks. Nothing in the tree itself. Nothing. Afterwards he said they decided to just go back to the house, and never really mentioned it to anyone, or each other after that. My dad does love the paranormal, but is a healthy skeptic when it comes to stuff. That event, he says, made him become a believer in Bigfoot. And after having my own encounter, I've come to believe in something as well. I'm not saying it's Bigfoot, but I think something is out there that hasn't been explained. In the comments below, let me know what you think about OP's father's encounter. Was it a Bigfoot? This has been a crazy ride, and I'll bring you any updates, in a future video. If you've stuck with me until the end. You're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the Cryptid or any of my other series, hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoyed this content, smash the like button. And leave a comment, down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out. Just let me know your preference, in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.